it's time! It's time for the big 2021 reading wrap-up video. I'm gonna start with some stats um, because I love me some data um, and then we'll talk about what I enjoyed this year, what I didn't, and what I started reading but haven't finished and whether or not I will finish those in 2022 or just drop them. So um, I'll leave timestamps for each section in the description in case you don't care about stats or whatever, but let's get started. So we're going to start with the stats and I apologize if I'm looking down, I'm just looking at my notes. Um, I read 65 books this year, uh, 7 of those were nonfiction, 58 of them were fiction. 45 of them were manga. Okay, so um, that's a full like 69% of what I read was manga. I read a lot of manga. It's kind of my, well, this year especially because I had four series that I was reading. Black Butler, uh, Nozaki-kun, Card Captor Sakura Clear Card, and uh, Takane Tohana. Um, Takane Tohana has ended. Uh, I just read the final volume, so that's off the table. Nozaki-kun, I've caught up to all the others. Like, I've, I've caught up to where Black Butler is and Nozaki-kun is and Clear Card is. So I'm um, just kind of waiting. They, they come out with maybe one or two volumes a year, so I might be reading less manga in 2022, um, or I might find new manga series to read. Um, I also read like three of the Moriarty the Patriot volumes this year. I didn't care for it. You can go watch that review if you're curious about why. But anyway, um, so large portion of manga. That means that I only read 20 books that weren't manga, 7 of those were nonfiction, and 13 of those were um, fiction of some kind. In fact, I can tell you fiction of what kind. Those 13 books, 5 of them were fantasy. Two of them were science fiction, science fiction fantasy. I, I don't read hard sci-fi, but they they were science-based. Um, they were Claire in the Sun, which is about an AI, and uh, 88 Names, which is about video the video gaming like world. Like so, um, kind of both near future sci-fi esque. Um, four mysteries. I'm so surprised that I read so few mysteries. I love mystery. Normally I read a ton of mystery. I don't know what happened this year that I didn't read um, more mystery, but I didn't. And two romances. One was a gothic romance um, that was uh, an old Victoria Holt book. And one was We Contain Multitudes, um, which is an LGBT gay romance. I, I classified it as romance since the relationship was the central point of the story. So, um, so yeah, I don't read a lot of romance. I'm not a big romance reader, um, generally speaking, unless it's like historical romance, historical fiction. But yeah, I went light on that this year. Of the nonfiction I read, two were biographies and two were memoirs. Um, two were uh, psychology, um, you know, books, and one was a writing reference book. Um, age groups, uh, I read 4 middle grade, I read 21 YA, and I read 40 adult books. Um, so about a third of it was juvenile literature of some kind, and then like 62% of it was adult. Um, I only read one ebook this year. <laughs> I, I haven't plugged in my paper white in I don't know how long, it's just like sitting on my um, nightstand. Um, I read 56 paperbacks and 8 hardbacks, um, so that's like 86% was uh, paperbacks basically, um, and another 12% were hardbacks. Uh, so yeah, I don't, I guess, I'm, I, I want to read more ebooks, I want to, um, because I do feel like, um, you know, it is, it's much more convenient in a lot of ways not to have to carry around a book um, or whatever. And ebooks, at least in, in indie ebooks, tend to be less expensive than the, the physical copies. Um, I didn't break down how many indie versus like m major public. I don't know. Are we calling it traditional publishing anymore? I don't even know what the terms are anymore. <laughs> But like um, major publishers, um, I didn't I didn't 
track that. Should I track that for 2022? Let me know. Uh, I did track... The oldest book I read was from 1966. That was the Victoria Holt and Freya in the Morning, which I reread. Um, I had three rereads this year. Um, and then most of what I read was very recent. Uh, Eleven of the books were from were published this year, 2021. Uh, seven books were published in 2020, and five more were published in 2019, which puts us, you know, at about a third of what I read was published in the last three years. Um, so relatively recent stuff. Um, of the 20 non-manga authors, um, there there were 22, so there were, sorry, there were 20 books that were not manga, fiction, non-fiction, but there were 22 authors because two of those books had co-authors. Of those, um, seven of them were male and 15 of them were female, uh, so 32% were male and 68% were female. Um, 82% of the others I read were Caucasian though, so I am hoping to be better about um, diversifying further. Um, and that doesn't count all of the, the manga authors because uh, you know, they're generally Asian, Japanese. Um, so uh, just of those 22 authors, still 82% of them were Caucasian. Uh, yeah, if I added the manga authors in, it would skew <laughs> way Asian. Um, but yeah, so I do hope to do better in coming years, uh, reading more diverse authors. Uh, so that is all the stats, I think. Yes. And, um, I don't know what my average rating for books was because Goodreads hasn't given me that yet. I would say that I tend to be more generous when I write manga. Um, I'm a little more demanding with prose. Um, I feel like I had a, a lot of disappointments this year, but I still tried to be fair. I know a lot of what I rated on Goodreads was right around three stars, so I'm guessing three a or a little over three would be my average rating for everything. But um, yeah, I, I don't know. So from here, we will go on to my favorites, uh, my disappointments, and um, things I started but haven't finished and whether or not I think I will finish them in 2022. So um, favorites of the year. I don't feel like I, I felt like, I don't feel like I felt like, really, really? Okay, anyway, I, nothing like, springs to mind to me like oh this was an amazing read this year i will say i think of everything i read i enjoyed clara and the sun most um i know a lot of people don't like that book think it's boring but to me it was kind of insightful i think it has a really interesting take on the way we create belief systems um it's a quiet book but then um ishiguro tends to write quiet books. Um, so yeah, I really enjoyed that. I also enjoyed 88 memes more than I expected to. I'm not a gamer. I don't really read sci-fi, but I found that one really pretty entertaining overall. So weirdly enough, the two sci-fi books that I read this year are the ones I enjoyed the most. Maybe I should explore more sci-fi um, in the future since I don't usually read that, but I did really enjoy it this year. Um, as for disappointments, I feel like there were a lot more of those. Uh, um, the House in the Cerulean Sea, a lot of people were like, oh, you're gonna love this, this is a great book. I liked it, I didn't love it. Um, you can watch my video about it. I was hoping anyway the wind blows was gonna be a great ending to the Simon Snow, like, trilogy, and was massively disappointed in that. I really disliked that book. Um, uh, the, the, if we were villains, like Shakespeare, or Dark Academia, Mystery, that should have been like everything I love and I just didn't care for it. So yeah, I don't know. I, there were definitely a number of, of disappointments this year for me. Um, none of, like none of them were like, ter the only one that was terrible. 
to me, and the only one that I like did not finish, will not finish, was Summer Suns, which if you look at my video from yesterday or the day before, like the video before this one, um, you'll see that I, I got 60 pages in and it just wasn't for me. And that's a shame because I really felt like that one was going to be a book I loved. And I didn't. Um, so, yeah. So that's best, worst. Let's talk about books I started but haven't finished. And should I finish them? Will I finish them? So one book I started um, was The Tower of Nero, which is the last of the Apollo series by Rick Riordan. And uh, I would have finished it, but my youngest took the book and scurried off with it, and I have not gone into his room to unearth it <laughs> um, and take it back. I do want to finish that one. I've enjoyed the Apollo series um, immensely, uh, so... I, I do want to finish it. It's the last book in the series. Um, another one I started but haven't finished is The India Fan by Victoria Holt. I had this plan to reread a bunch of Victoria Holt. Um, she was one of my favorite kind of gothic romance authors back when I was younger. And I remembered The India Fan specifically as being one of my favorites. I started it. I haven't gotten very far. Um, I, you'll see I did reread Minfrey in the Morning and then I started rereading the India fan. I don't know if I'll continue this reread um, or this Victoria Holt kind of thing. Um, it might have been one of those bees in my bonnets that's since flown off uh, and I'm over it. Or it may be that I get bored and am looking for something to read and I pick it up again. Could go either way. Um, I also started rereading The Once and Future King, which is a book I read originally when I was like 13 or 14. Uh, I'm like two-thirds of the way through it. I would very much like to finish this reread, um, but I, I mean, you know, hopefully in 2022 I'll finish it. I, we watched all of the Merlin series, not this year, that must have been last year, um, and it made me want to reread The Ones of Future King, so I picked it back up, and now I'm just like, I just need to finish with the reread. Uh, I started reading History is All You Left Me. I haven't read any Adam Silvera. Is that his last name? Um, I have never read anything by him. And this one I'm kind of struggling with. I like this, the, the current story line, but the flashbacks I don't love. Um, so I don't know if I'll finish that one. My daughter has read They Both Die at the End, at the end, in the end. I don't know. Uh, she really liked that one, so maybe I'll see if I like that one better. Um, but yeah. And then the last book that I started reading and haven't finished is actually a nonfiction called Inside the Japanese Mind. It's a collection of essays about Japanese culture and the way it forms, the way pe Japanese people think or behave. And um, I started reading it like front to back, but it might be one of those things where I need to just kind of pick and choose which essays sound interesting to me um, because, you know, they're organized alphabetically by, I don't even know how to explain it, like by the, the kind of the term that, <laughs> anyway, I don't know how to explain it. They're written by Japanese, like, college students, I think, and then they were collected, um, into this and you know translated and it's them explaining various aspects of their culture and like Bushido and things like that and and the history of it and its current day like um, influence and you know and and how it, anyway um, I heard about it from another youtuber and it sounded interesting but it it's maybe not the kind of thing you can just pick up and read front to back because it's more like, oh, you pick up one and read like an essay here, an essay there uh, kind of thing. I I don't know if I'll ever finish it, but I will probably definitely read parts of it. Um, anyway, so that is stuff that I started, didn't finish, might or might not finish 
in the coming year. Um, and then looking forward to 2022, um, as I mentioned in my last video, I think the first book on deck is The Beautiful. Um, I also have Keep Sh Sharp by Sanjay Gupta, um, which I'm curious about uh, as I age. I'm a week away from my birthday, so I'm getting old, wanting to stay healthy, fit, mentally, you know, as well as physically. Um, and I've got like a bunch of books on my want to read list at Goodreads, but uh, a lot of what I can, what a lot of what I do end up reading is dependent on what's at the library or what I find at the half price bookstore. <laughs> just what happens to be there. And sometimes it's stuff I'm looking for and sometimes it's stuff I just stumble across. So it, my reading's very eclectic. Um, if there's anything you think I should read, uh, let me know. Um, I'm always open to suggestions. I have a really great book club that um, often gives me good suggestions. They seem to really like Louise Penny. Um, and since I do love mysteries, maybe I'll, I'll pick up some of those. Um, yeah, so that's where I'm at. That was my reading year. It was, um, kind of a slump. I mean, when I look at 13 actual like fiction books, that seems like so few. It's like one a month and a little, and then I mean the seven nonfiction, but still 20 books feels low. But again, if I read less manga in the coming year, um, I'll be reading more books. Uh, so we'll see how that falls out. And yeah, I will see you in the new year um, with whatever I am reading. And, and, you know, if I see any cool book tags, I'll do those. But um, yeah, that's, that's a wrap. <laughs>